everybody. This is John here. This is Paul. George. And Ringo. And we're very happy to be on your program once again. Hi, everyone, and welcome again to Beatles News Briefs. I'm your host, Steve Marinucci, and here's some news. Paul McCartney officially released word April 24th of his latest repackage for Egypt Station. The new Explorers Edition, as it was called, will be available in two CDs, three LPs, and on digital. It'll have 26 tracks, all the original album tracks, plus 10 tracks that include some live tracks from the live appearances he did around the release of the album. And it's all good news for the fabs in the latest Billboard 200, dated May 4th. The Beatles 1 album is up at 136, up from 169 the previous week. And Abbey Road is at 152, up from 155. And on the latest UK official charts top 100 album chart, the Beatles 1 sits at number 90 this week, down from 71 last week. If you didn't see it, you should check out my interview with Michael Lindsay Hogg on Billboard.com, where he talks mostly about the Rolling Stones Rock and Roll Circus, which includes John Lennon and Yoko Ono, uh, and the discussion about uh, how they uh, were used in it. But it also had some comments on his feelings on the upcoming Let It Be uh, film coming from uh, Peter Jackson. Here's a clip of what he told us. How do you feel about the new version that Peter Jackson is going to be doing? Well, I'm very excited by it, really. Uh, Peter and I have met, and we've he quizzed me a lot about the original um, Let It Be and what decisions were involved in the, in the way that it came out and, and what pointers I might have had. First of all, he's a he's a wonderful movie maker, and second of all, he's a he's a real Beatles fan. I mean, he 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 knows all the outtakes. He knows everything. But in a in another way, I'm 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 more <clears throat> than glad that Peter's doing it. Um, l- l- let it be uh, was put together from I think my my Let It Be was put together from, from I don't know fifty hours of film, <laughs> and what was released was had things cut out of it for various reasons and things which I'd wanted to keep in which for various reasons came out and Peter is going to be able to Peter is going to be able to show uh, stuff that I would have wanted in the original to do with the relationship between the Beatles the interaction between them um, but um, wasn't able to either for time reasons or stuff and Peter's going to be able to include a lot of things which may have been in the original may not have been in the original, but the, the, the audience, the the people who've been clamoring for this over the years with Peter's movie and then the re-release of my movie will get a much bigger picture of what that time was really like and what was going on between them. So I, I, I couldn't have been happier. And this week we also got news of the passing of Russ Gibb, who was part of the legendary Paul is Dead story which you could possibly call one of the first modern instances of fake news. Here's part of an interview we did with Russ in 2010, in which he told about how the Paul is Dead legend grew. Well, that's the, what's one of the interesting things about the story. That's the mystery part. Uh-huh. Uh, I have had three people claim they were the ones that called me. Ah. However, you have to remember that we took a lot of calls that morning, right when that happened. Mm-hmm. Right after the other, and... Who am I to say that whoever said they did it gave me the first call is wrong? I, you know, they, they, they may have very definitely called because there were calls coming in. And, in fact, we practically shut down the station's phone system. <laughs> the uh, head engineer came in and newscast, and he said, what's going on here? Because all our phones were jammed up. Mm-hmm. The only line that was open was our private, private line to uh, the station manager, and the program director, uh, Mr. Maruka. Frank Maluka, and Frank uh, called me because he was getting calls from our engineers that something was wrong with our phone system. Uh, the phone lit up, and somebody on a Sunday, which, you know, I was accustomed to playing in and out of the Vita for eight minutes or seven <laughs> minutes, <laughs> and uh, going to take a look out the window or whatever was going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, all of a sudden, the kid said, and I was bored to tears, uh, have you ever played the record backwards? 
Now, I had never even thought of playing a record backwards. Right. I was happy to play him forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what happened is that uh, he said, try it. Now, in those days, we had turntables that you could turn back. They were huge. Tables right. Oh, huge. yeah. All the equipment that you have today. Right. So uh, I, I played it backwards, number nine, number nine, number nine, and I think I was with the White Album, as I recall. Mm-hmm. And uh, it said very clearly, Turn me on, dead man. Mm-hmm. Turn me on, dead man. Well, that freaked me out. So that was interesting. So I put it on the air. Well, all oh, hell broke loose. Yeah. It, it was the most incredible thing. Within seven or eight minutes, people were at the window at the station, uh, which went into our sitting room, our uh, you know our entrance area. Mm-hmm. And I could see out there, and they were they were trying to get in. And then the phone was lighting up, and people like Andrew and the other folks were telling me, had you heard that Paul was dead, and blah, blah, blah. Mm. And I said, well, I've heard that every every famous person is either a dope dealer, this his wife, or uh, uh, has passed away. Mm-hmm. And I said, uh, I've heard that. But after I heard that record, I had heard stories when I was in London, uh, about some feud. I had been a good friend of Eric Clapton. Uh-huh. Well, I was a good friend. Let's just say I was a friend. Mm-hmm. And uh, Eric had told me that they were feuding, that they were thinking about breaking up. Okay. That, felt, that, that went into my idea that maybe they were putting something into their records telling us a story that was going to unfold. That's mm-hmm. Really, and, and on the, in the special program we made, we talked about that. Interesting. You know, uh, and so here, here it was. And by, by the way, about a year later, the Beatles broke up. Right. Uh, but anyway, they had been feuding, particularly Paul and John. I understood right. from the people I knew in uh, in, in London. Now you got to know that the music thing in London was very self-contained. Uh, the big music magazines, uh, the, uh, the, the 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 clubs, uh, everything was located in about an eight block area of London. Mm-hmm. So everybody knew everybody else. Everybody was working on everybody else's records, uh, helping out, trying to make it happen. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I had heard that they were feuding. And then somebody said, well, have you ever played uh, Strawberry Fields? And that one came out, uh, uh, Paul is Dead, or I forget what it said, but they there were all kind of clues that kids were calling. They mm-hmm. were playing their records backwards. And, of course, the record company was delighted. After it all calmed down, I think Capital sent me a full collection of Beatle records as well as the Rolling Stones. The best source of information about the whole Paul is Dead hoax is Andrew Reeves' Turn Me On Deadman, The Complete Story of the Paul McCartney Death Hoax. It's available through a link on our That's What I Want Beatle store page on Facebook and in our Beatles News and Information group also on Facebook. Albums released this week, Full Moon Fever by Tom Petty, which was released April 29th, 1989, has George Harrison on it, and the video for I Won't Back Down has Ringo on it. Also, um, on May 4th, 1977, The Beatles at the Hollywood Bowl, the first release, uh, was uh, released, and Paul McCartney's uh, Flaming Pie was released on May 5th, 1977. Um, here's what some of what's streaming. Um, just coming to uh, uh, Netflix is Above Us Only Sky uh, about John and Yoko. And then already on, out there is this long list, and I'm going to just give it to you. It's uh, Hard Day's Night is on the Criterion channel. Beatles Eight Days a Week, The Touring Years, and Good Old Frida are on Hulu. Strange Fruit, The Beatles, Apple uh, Records, and Candy with Ringo Starr is on Tubi, T-U-B-I. Um, George Harrison, Living in the Material World, Pirates of the Caribbean, De- Dead Men Tell No Tales with a, palm, with a cameo from Paul McCartney, and Nowhere Boy are also on Netflix. Yellow Submarine and The Beatles won music videos, and The Last Waltz with Ringo are on Amazon Prime. Caveman with Ringo is on video is on Voodoo, and the U.S. versus John Lennon is also streaming on Voodoo. That's V-U-D-U to spell Voodoo. That's it for now. You can catch our shows on Fab4Radio.com. Thanks, Matt. Beatles Arama. Thanks, Pat. 
and also on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts. Please join our Beatles News and Information group on Facebook for the latest in the Beatles world, and check out our That's What I Want Beatles store page on Facebook for gift ideas for yourself or your favorite people, and it's where you can find links for both contributing editor Candy Leonard's Beatleness book and my Meet a Monkey Davy Jones ebook. That's it. We'll be looking for you. Please subscribe if you don't already. And until next time, this is Steve Marinucci saying... Be seeing you. that one market fab <laughs>